Baba, Manto Vetabelate. This is everybody's day. This is everybody's day. There's a storm coming. Joe was telling me us yesterday that there's a storm coming. And that, that storm will ride on strange wisdom. Strange wisdom. Believers will respond to it by changing ancient landmarks gradually, gradually, until we have moved all our cornerstones and they are now in Babylon. May you be spared of what is to come. So we need to press into God to embody personal consecrations. The man who will ascend to the hill of the Lord, the Bible said he swears to his own heart. <laughs> that if, if he decides this is what I will do, even if um, discomfort will come to him, he will stay with what he has said he will do. He will not, because of discomfort, change the rules. In a short while, we are going to pray, but I just want you to give, to give you a picture. I know that there is a force textured attack that is supposed to come in our direction. But I know if we all rise and begin to pray, we can quench that one. Unfortunately, one of the last things corruption takes from a man is prayer. He can allow prayer. That a man is, is, is wicked, is evil, is sinful. But he does not quit the preaching, the teaching, and the prayer ministry. Sometimes the enemy leaves those things and it gives false reality so that the man cannot repent. These are my new bodies. So let's go gradually to the word of God and um, we trust God that I will be helped. Give me back my scripture. Ephesians 6.10 Finally, my brethren, be strong, not in yourselves, but in the Lord and in the power of his might. The strength of the believer, and according to mechanical engineering definitions, the strength of a material is the ability of that material to... Is, 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 it, is the word resist? Or to withstand a force that is gen that a force that that's the way we say it. Um, I don't think it's the word we stand I'm using. Let me use the word resist indentation or deformation by the activity of an external force. That Victor, you are straight. And in the day a force comes to indent you, that's to, to create a cavity into you. You have the ability to stay no matter how hard that force is. So that there are times when you may not be making progress. Like I've said, one of the definitions of progress in the last days is that you could beat the waves of corruption. Your allegiance to Jesus did not suffer indentation or suffer deformation when forces came against you. And Paul is saying to the Ephesian church and by extension to us that you will need to be strong in the Lord. There is a hub of strength in the Lord. It's not easy to be strong in the Lord because every man wants to be able to testify that he created strength. But the ones who will survive, we need to look up to God and in him alone will they find strength. Now, when you look to the Lord, within that sphere of his expression, there is also a facility that he gives to you. It means that our strength is designed to be the byproducts of an entity who is the Lord or an office and a structure of spiritual performance which the Bible refers to as the power of his might. 
the might of God is a power hub. You will need to draw from it permanently. Or what you call strength will not be strong enough when darkness comes against you. Be strong in the Lord and in the power that comes out of his might. His might, God's capacity is like a reservoir. And when a man begins to behold that reservoir, certain valves like taps are unlocked and then power begins to seep into that person. There are prayers that turn the valves, but there are also postures. So that in case Bolu, you are busy and you cannot, you cannot pray to say send me, you will need to be postured as the weak because he gave power to the weak. There are entrance statements that you need to make into every day. Lord, I'm willing, but I cannot in myself. And then the valve is ready. A hand begins to work on it. It's like an automated system. So that every time you come into an hour of need, the valve is turned on your behalf, even if you lack the power to pray. I am not a product of prayer. I am a product of the mercy of God. Because there were days I could not fulfill the prayer requirements that I needed for survival. Ah! But mercy said no. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. Those who have better tools have not been gifted my reach in ministry. So it's not about better tools. It's not about older members. I, I was, we tra I traveled with my son and my daughter in the army and went with Pastor Rasina this morning. And Ras said, hmm, Sir, have you seen that we are not too old in our spiritual family? We don't have, as in, I mean, old, old men. Even our spiritual father is in his 40s. But we don't look like young men. Certain vows have been occasioned by mercy. And then we do business like ancient men. The second thing that he said that baffled me. He said in our spiritual family, we are not like the regular setting. It's not one strong man and everybody weak. God has planted a system that makes men strong. That if you don't see our father, you are still not hopeless. Can you whisper to your neighbor, be strong in the Lord. Some of you have not been able to testify to sustain strength. So that on Monday you survived temptations. On Tuesday you beat corruption. But on Wednesday you became a victim. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Next verse, I'm going to 13. Put on the whole armor of God. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Watch this. Because you have been seated with Christ, which gives voice to... The legalities of your redemption. The import of Jesus' sacrifice for you. And your acknowledgement that that sacrifice was about you. Because the guy who is not saved now is not seated with the Lord. Even though the price of his sin has been paid. Are you with me? So, it's, it's the import of two things. His sacrifices... Is satisfying the demands of the justice system of heaven and your acknowledgement that those sacrifices were about you. If you sustain the reading of the book of Ephesians, then you come into the medium part, which is um, um, the communication of what we can call Christian ethics, the Christian life, how you are designed to live. As a result of your seatedness with Christ. If your life is aided to sustain that progression, your last phase of expression will be that the one who has benefited from the kingdom must take a stand for the kingdom. Paul was speaking to brethren from verse 10. So, about 
whether the brethren were in the choir or they were in ushering the communication to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might was to everybody even if your job is to sweep the church Paul is saying if you sustain your work with Jesus a day will come when you will be recruited to stand for the kingdom there is an aspect of the defense of the realities of the kingdom and the boundaries of the kingdom that God will not do for men. He saved us among many other reasons for that day of kingdom defense. Are you getting my point? And it's not just the day of the apostles. Everyone who has been saved has that destiny that you will stand. And so like the instruction in verse 10 is to everyone... The instruction in verse 11 is to everyone that all of us must put on the whole armor. If you wear it partially, you'll be a victim. The whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the devices, the we it's going to be a battle of wisdoms. And every one of us who has been called to stand will be will be attacked. By the wiles of the enemy. Can you from the lexicon give me the word wiles? Let's let's look deeper into it. The wiles. That's what we have been called to withstand or to stand against. Help me. I've not been able to fully unlock this tab, so I can't put any Bible on it. It's just my notes that can be there. You said okay trickery it means it's a wisdom thing you know the word tricks I put two sweets in my hands I say choose one there's a way I move the hands that in your mind you think you are following the pattern so you say it's here it's here it's here and then when I open it you find out that I operated at a level of wisdom that I knew you could not. You see, I'll make it simple. If I do like this, you can focus. You follow it. But in doing like this, things could have exchanged. And then you say, it's this one. And then you find out. Trickery. Yes, sir. Corny acts, not acts. What we have been raised to fight is witchcraft. We'll fight that one too. That one comes straight. But this one comes with an additional word they are corny it means they are embedded or they are laced with wisdom any other word this it so there is a wisdom that we must embody and what Paul did was to communicate the wisdom as instructions that no matter how trickish the enemy is no matter how corny he collides with you. Are there any other words? Yes, yes. That's no matter how deceitful the enemy is, if you wear the whole armor of God, you'll be victorious. Verse 12. For will for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Because it's a battle of wisdoms, the average believer of who comes against the devil with human wisdom will fail. So, you go to war not just with the mastery of your weapons, but having a good mental understanding of what your enemy is. Even in football, which is a natural sport, when you want to play a team, you send out like spies. What they go to do is to watch the matches of the enemy. They don't just watch, okay, how do they play? They look at the effect of pairing certain players. Okay, if you have, when they used the, the four, maybe four, three, three formation, how did this player play? Okay, it throws passes from that. How can we crack 43? And then in case they are playing against a very strong team, you can pack the boss. You can put six defenders. How did they play when they isolated one striker? How did they play when they had five defenders? 
they would go across multiple formations to check the enemy knows how to pull down a praying church he also knows how to win against a word-based church